The internet is filled with endless opportunities to learn more about the soda. As I study every article and watch every soda-related video, I learn about soda. Soda drinker! Pro! Yes, this does in fact actually exist. Now we have had a game about drinking before, thanks to Dubal Morale. It was weird, but at least it had a point. The only point was to get completely hammered, kiss girls, and fake doing your homework to avoid the wrath of your mom's concrete meatballs, but it did have a goal. But this is the world's first FPS. First Person Soda. That is according to the website. The whole point is to drink soda. That's really all you do. You can drink it slow or fast, you can collect bonus sodas for absolutely no reason at all. Bonus soda. You don't even drink them, you just kind of grab them because they're there, because you want more soda. There's not really any way to lose other than quitting the game. You can fall off the level, off of skyscrapers, crushed by a giant fridge door, stuck on the scenery, but you can still proceed to the next level simply through the mystical power of emptying your soda into your mouth. You know, I'm not even sure if that's a can of soda or a cup of soda. With these graphics, it's kind of hard to tell, especially since every texture in this game looks like it was done during MS Paint's amateur hour, and the 3D models can be, uh, interesting sometimes. Like, what is this? Or this? Or this? Everything in this game seems to be just detailed enough to give you a vague idea of what it is, but not detailed enough to be at all comprehensible. It's like a giant ride through the world of soda, if that soda was infused with LSD and shrooms. Although, at least on your quest towards soda enlightenment, you do quite often have some decent music. Not to mention the voice of Soda Drinker, who sounds like a stoned hippie obsessed with soda, which is absolutely hilarious. Just take a listen to a few lines. Skyscraper soda. They're so high. The carbonation gives me strength to stand on this wing. I look at the earth and the oceans. I wish they were filled with soda. Yeah, he wonders about the oceans being soda. It's like the evil plan of a spy fox villain. The music does drown out his voice at times though, since the music volume is different on each level. Actually, everything is different on each level. Some levels you move like a Galapagos tortoise, some you move like a Jet Set Radio character on ice, some you can move up to three times faster sideways than forwards, some you move slower backwards than forwards, some there's unreachable bonus sodas, like that really matters, and there's some narrow passageways you can only go through one way. The entire game just implements whatever rules it feels like on each level, you never quite know what's going to happen. My best theory is that this is an acid trip simulator. Okay, a soda trip simulator. Along with the vague graphics and soda drinker's voice, you also seem to vary in size with each level too, which seems to imply that your perspective is messed up. You're not affected in the least by extreme heat or extreme cold, and you end up in places that no person really has any business being in. You end up tiny inside of a fridge and in places like a giant mouth on giant turtles, the land of eight rainbows, no, I did not make that up. And places like your own stomach, as evidenced by the soda flowing in only when you drink. And the last level, inside of the soda can you are currently drinking from. This is my dream. Drinking a soda. It all has to be some hallucinogenic soda fever dream. That's the only way this makes any sense at all. I hesitate to call it a game, but it's certainly a strange experience. Now, I've heard people say this game can give you the feeling of drinking a soda without a soda in your hand, but... All it does is make me want more soda. A lot more soda. Every soda. I want to drink all the soda in the world, and then drink more. I'll be Soda Man, made of soda. I'll drink until I am one with the soda, until I am soda. 
then I can drink myself. Well, that was weird. Why don't I have my goggles on now? Oh well. This is a game with a download link hidden in Soda Drinker Pro called Vivian Clark. It had a Kickstarter of its own at one point, and it's probably one of the weirdest games I have ever seen. Right up there with stuff like WarioWare. So, how do I explain Vivian Clark? Well, we can go back to the WarioWare comparison. It's like that, but with no one-word instructions to help you know what to do, and on much more crack. WarioWare is to your average cocaine user as this game is to Tony Montana. It's got a huge pile of the devil's dandruff on its desk, except it's trying to snort it all at once while watching back-to-back -back Monty Python films. It's simple, and yet it's confusing. And totally bizarre. A game that involves roller skating stars, shooting sandwiches into mouths, dumping water out of a hot air balloon piloted by a snake, starting you off as a raindrop along with having this crazy art style tends to merit the word bizarre. So, how do you play? Like I said, you start off as a raindrop, you touch something, and you become that thing or something having to do with it. You are given absolutely no hints as to what you're supposed to do and what will kill you. Your only controls are the arrow keys to move and the space bar, which, according to the game, sometimes does things. Gee, thanks. Your only objective in Vivian Clark seems to be explore enough to find and complete all 40 worlds or screens or what have you. However, each time you die, you are taken back to the campfire. Here you have two options. You start with three clocks and you can use one of them to play a minigame. Either shoot the baddies and survive, outrun fire with platforms, or shoot sandwiches into a mouth. If you win, you continue right where you left off. If you die, back to the campfire with you. Either way, you lose the clock. If you don't do that, you have to evaporate to get back into the game. However, seeing as you're a raindrop, you make the fire weaker each time, the only real solid logic this game has. Once it goes out, it's game over. I don't know what happens when you win, because good luck trying to do that, the lack of explanations makes things really difficult without a lot of patience and practice. And I mean a lot of practice and patience. Some of the games by themselves are really hard to figure out. Take the snake in a hot air balloon dropping water. What are you supposed to do? Water the plants, right? Wrong! That seems to kill you, actually. But you can't move and you can only hit the space bar, which drops water. I played at 480p at the time, so I zoomed to 720p, and I see these little tiny seeds in between the bushes, and that is what you're supposed to hit. How in the roasted pink marshmallows do you figure that one out? They don't even sprout the first few times you hit one, there's hardly any indication that you're doing things right. Still, I do have some hopes for Vivian Clark yet. It makes me want to keep playing just because I want to see what other crazy stuff is in it. I've only ever seen maybe a third of the game at a time at most, and that's with a lot of repeats. Heaven knows what else is in this game. I also heard from Will Brearley that he's making a bigger, polished version for the Penny Arcade Expo that's meant to have more worlds and a bit less confusion, but no less absurdity, and thank Arceus for that. Heck, you can even go to the Vivian Clark site and pay to have an idea of yours put into the game. No copyrighted stuff, so no Arceus level. But hey, we could have a level with roasted pink marshmallows in it yet. Or a level about drinking soda, maybe. So, a summary. Soda Drinker Pro is more a trippy, strange experience than a game, and Vivian Clark is a delightfully strange, if frustratingly confusing game that shows some promise and is hopefully going to be even better in the near future. This is Tanara Kuranov signing off, and I think it's time to cut back on the soda a wee bit. Drinking is this software is so useful. For when I don't have a soda, I wish that I could eat soda. I can always simulate it. I'm so thankful that this exists. But I'm also glad I have a soda in my hand right now.